You'll have to turn to your Bibles today because we don't have it on the screen for you. Uh, we are going kind of archaic, old school. So here's, uh, we're going to be, I'll, I'll give you the places we're going to be so that it will be helpful to you. We're going to be in Ephesians 3, and then we're going to uh, take a trip to 2 Kings chapter 4. We can start there, and then we'll also go to 2 Kings chapter 13. But uh, the majority of our time will be spent in Ephesians 3. So um, get that out, get the Bible out, get your notebook out, all that kind of stuff. Get your cup of coffee, warm it up. Uh, we're ready to go. If you want to go out and play in the snow while you, uh, while you listen, that's, that's okay too. But let's, uh, let's listen to this. Ephesians 3, starting in verse 14. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Amen. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Yeah, I, uh, you know, beavers are an interesting creature. Oh boy. Um, they are supposed to be really good at building dams, right? Um, that's the purpose of a beaver. That's what they do. Caleb's shaking his head because he doesn't like beavers. He likes ducks. <laughs> Might be some of you out there as well. That's not the kind of beaver or duck I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about the woodland creature, the beaver. Um, it, it's supposed to be really good at building dams. And, uh, and I, I, I was at Rogers one uh, one evening, late afternoon evening, and Roger's house, if you don't know who Roger is, he's, uh, he's an amazing person, uh, one, of, one of the people here at Rhapsody that, um, that is really a mentor in my life, and also he is the chaplain at the YMCA. Uh, he, so we were, we were in his, he lives on the Washougal River, and we were sitting there one day, and we were looking at the river and, and noticed that there was this, this sort of like like an attempt at building a dam. And we were talking to, uh, to about this and Roger told me about this beaver that could not for the life of him or her build a dam. Like it, it was trying to gather all of the types of wood that you could need. Like it was a, I, I joked around and said, that's a terrible beaver. Like it is really bad at, you know that saying you have one job, you had one job. That's the beaver's one job and it could not do it. And so I, I thought about this beaver throughout this week. And uh, I, I don't know why my mind went there, but then I realized in the Holy Spirit, I, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, be like that beaver. Hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, what exactly does that mean? But the more I thought about it, I began to understand what God was saying. He was saying, when it comes to the flow of my power and my presence in your life, be really bad at building dams and be really good at going with the flow. Amen. And so today I want to talk to you from the title, Go With the Flow. And, uh, and, and our job is to be like that beaver, <laughs> um, be really bad at building dams, at building things that block out what God is trying to do and the flow that he wants us in. Um, and so we're going to talk about that using Ephesians 3. I love that Paul begins this section of Ephesians really on his knees. Um, he says, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father when he thinks of all this. 
And then he goes on to talk about who God is. Like that's what, so if you wonder what makes Paul fall to his knees in awe, it's who God is and who he realizes God is. The creator of heaven and earth, of all things, right? The God who made everything. He's completely undone by how powerful God is. He's awe-inspiring. He does not withhold himself from us at all whatsoever, right? He, he never withholds himself from us. He is a constant flow of wonder, power, and love. Awesome. Constant flow. And Paul is praying that the Ephesians and really all believers would in response not withhold ourselves mm -hmm. from him. It, that we would provide God or give God full access to our lives so that he can flow completely in and through us, that we wouldn't block any of what he wants to do in and through us. And that's really what Paul is getting at here in Ephesians uh, 14 through 21. So if we take the first group of verses, we're talking 16 through 19. Um, he, what he's saying is you have unlimited access to the presence and power of God in your life. That, that literally his glorious unlimited resources can empower you with inner strength to be and do all that you need to be and do. He, ha he has not withheld any of that from us. But what's interesting is that he goes on to say, and kind of back to the making room analogy. So if we went back to last week and we talked about Peter not having, uh, ha having fished all night, not, not caught anything, and have, he, he made room for Jesus in his boat. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the availability of how much Jesus can be in our lives, right? Um, th th he's not withholding any of himself from us. What we do sometimes, though, is we block access to certain places. So if we're using a house analogy, we can say that we deadbolt some doors, right? We, we lock him out of certain places of our lives. And the, the reason for that, there's, there's a lot of reasons. It's uncomfortable, number one. Um, that, that's, that's the biggest thing. Because when, when he gets into those places, uh, he, he wants to make some changes, right? He wants to rearrange. He wants to, he wants to do some things in your life that might be a little bit uncomfortable. But all of him is available to us, and so we don't want to build dams to block his flow. We want to go with, with the flow. Um, so how? How, does, how do we do this? How do we do this? Um, Paul makes it very clear. He says, he says that Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Mm -hmm. Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. So how? You trust him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In, in other words, you rely on him more and more. You surrender more and more. Your dependence becomes more and more. Yes. And when that happens, when you're no longer dependent on yourself and your own resources and the things that, that maybe you're talented in or, or whatever it might be, when you, when you stop relying on yourself, when I stop trusting in my ability, and I give him, and I say, I trust you no matter what this looks like. Mm -hmm. It might look crazy. It might look like, like this is where I should be going, but you're asking me to do, I, I don't understand, but I trust you. That's the, that's the posture. When Christ makes his home in our hearts more and more, it's because our posture is we trust him more and more. So we want to make, allow him to make his home completely in our hearts by trusting him. And so the question today, and really the hard question that we have to ask for each of us, and it's different for each of us, is which of your doors have you locked to him? Which of your doors have you locked to him? It's different for all of us. Some might be the same. It might be your time. It might be your money. It might be your relationships. It might be your career. It might be uh, your toxic habits. It might be, it might be, we could go on and on. And I guarantee that I don't need to really list them out for you to know the areas that it is. And, and, and the reason I know this is because I know the doors that I lock. 
And the way I know that is, is that when I feel God knocking, when I feel Jesus knocking on that door, I tend to, uh, to, to be like, I, I got this one. Like I, I, I got this, the, in this area, I've got a plan, right? And I'm a planner. I love plans. God's canceling all my plans this year. Like I thought, I thought last year was a cancellation of plans. God's giving me all new plans this year. Um, and, and, but it's good. Like what he's do, cause he won't kick down the door, but he will knock a little bit harder sometimes. Right? Like it, it, there are times when, when he'll just stand back and, and wait for you to open the door, maybe with, with not even a word. But there are times when he begins to maybe knock, maybe pound on the door a bit, and it intensifies you knowing that I need to surrender in this area. So I, I wonder today what area you might need to surrender in. What area you might need to say, I trust you. I need to depend on you. Uh, for a lot of us, it's our finances. I mean, that's just one of the ways that I, I think in America, especially just the, the way that this country's run, the way that it's, it's capitalism and like money drives what we do. And so a lot of times finances can be the door that we kind of keep God out of. In, in other words, we trust in ourselves and our ability to make money, our ability to find resources, all of that kind of stuff. So that could be, that could be a big one for some of us. Um, another one in, in this arena that's hard is, ti- is, is time, right? Because we want to fill our time with what we want to fill our time with. And maybe God wants something a little bit different. So whatever it is, I think the, 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 the idea here is that it's time to maybe crack open that door and let him, let him in. Um, because we wonder why, you know, this is, this is kind of back to a little bit of like, I, I've, I've got to just say this because it's just got to be said sometimes, but we wonder why we're not strong in certain areas because this is all about growing strong. What Paul's talking about is I want you to be strong in your faith, in, in what God's doing. You're like, I want your roots to go deep is what he's saying. I want you to experience the full love, the full power, the full presence of God in your life. Like I want you to be strong. And we wonder sometimes why we're not strong in certain areas, but then we shut the door to Jesus's limitless strength Mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to, to, you can't have one without the other. I'll say that. Um, We need to let him in because I know it's uncomfortable to let him in. It's pretty uncomfortable to let him in, but it is worth your discomfort because when Jesus walks into a room, he brings with him light and life. When he walks into that room, whatever room it is that you've locked away for, when he walks into that room, he brings with him light and he brings with him life. And in those places where there maybe is decay and death and darkness, it's going to be a little uncomfortable when the light comes on or when the love comes in, right? It's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard at first. You have to make adjustments with your eyes. You have to, th- you start to see really what's there. <laughs> when it's dark, you can't see what's there for real. Like you think you know what that room is full of, but when the light really comes on, when Jesus really walks into the room, then you start to see, oh, oh, this, this room's out of control. Yikes. And, uh, and I can't clean it up. You know, you've been paralyzed, like having, having to go clean a room, mm-hmm. paralyzed and like, I don't even know what to do first. Yep. It's the same way when you're trying to clean up your own life. <laughs> um, Jesus knows the order. Jesus knows the, the way that it, it needs to get cleaned up. And, and really he does the cleaning. And so uh, he asks us to take steps. He asks us to pick up a little bit like any father would. Um, but he, he, he wants to do it. He wants to bring his power and presence in our lives more and more. And so the more we trust God, the less we limit what he can do, you know, the more we, we trust God, we, we, uh, the less we limit who he can make us become, 
right? Like yeah. we, when, when we don't limit Jesus in our lives, we won't limit what he can do in and through us. He, cause he, he can do, and it, and it says it, <laughs> he's able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think or imagine or dream up. That's right. He can do far more than we even think he can. Yeah. And we even limit what we think he can do. So imagine what would happen if we started to actually think he could do something and then we realized that he could actually do beyond that. Mm right? Like what would happen exponentially in our hearts, our minds, our neighborhoods, our city, our world, if we actually realized that he can do infinitely more than we might ask, imagine, or think? What, what could happen? What could happen? I was thinking about, um, you know, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I was thinking about that verse this week, Psalm 37. It's an amazing, amazing verse. Um, but what's cool about it is, you know, a lot of times we hear it like, if we delight in the Lord, he'll give us the desires we already have. That's like the, that's, that's kind of the way that we want to think about it. But the truth is, is that what it really is saying is, we take delight in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. In other words, he will give us new desires. Yeah. He'll, he'll take the, those things that we thought were grandiose and amazing and those those dreams and it like he'll no 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 that's that's small stuff yeah. let me give you what you really desire that's right he he want because the more we trust god the more you begin to dream and imagine what he can do yeah. and i'm going to tell you that if if we can dream and imagine a lot then the yeah. dream we, we have to realize that the dreams he has for us yeah are way better than the dreams we have for ourselves. The, the, the hope that we have for ourselves, mm -hmm. it's nothing compared to the hope that Jesus has for us, yeah. for what he sees, what he imagines, what, what's in his head about us, what he says about us. We sang that. Mm -hmm. You are who, I am who you say I am. And what he says I am is far beyond what I say I am. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank God. Because a lot of times what I say I am is a, is a lie. And when we surrender ourselves to those desires and we're open to what he has, mm -hmm. we can go with the flow. We can, we, we can not only go with the flow of what he wants to do in us, but we can then begin to go with the flow of what he wants to do through us. Right. So now we're not only limiting, because he's, he's able to do more than we can ask or imagine not just in us, but through us. Yeah. And so if that's true, if we get it, if we get it internally first, then what we will begin to imagine is what can you do through me now? Yeah. Like how, how can I now partner with you and, and move your kingdom forward? What do you want to do with yeah. in and like, uh, man, you're limitless. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. So let's go, right? Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's, let's go with that flow. Yeah. That's the flow I want to go with. Right. And, and, and don't stop short. That's the, that's the thing that we're so, see, dams are, they're, they're two way, if you will. There's a, let's, let's go with a cap metaphor. Um, no cap, right? Uh, it's a saying that the kids have. It doesn't mean what I'm about to say, but it, it's a good saying. Um, a cap is, to, it, it, it does two things. It keeps things in and it keeps things out. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's actually what, what we do when we, when we put a cap on something is we keep things from going in, right? Mm -hmm. But we also keep things from flowing out. And so the problem is, is when we put a dam up or put a cap on or a lid on it, whatever, whatever analogy you want to use, we're stopping the flow in and we're stopping the flow out. We're just stopping short altogether. And there's a couple of, of pretty amazing stories about what God can do, because this is the, these stories sometimes can be interpreted as what we can do if we put our mind to it. But that's not really what either of these two stories is about. These two stories are really about the limitless nature of God. And the fact that if we lean into that, in other words, if we, if we break open the dam, if we take the lid off, right, no cap, 
and we flow, we could actually flow down the river that he wants us to go down. We, we can do all the things he's asked us to do. But I want to read these two stories. So go to 2 Kings uh, chapter 4. And we're going we're gonna to end with these two stories. Okay. One day, and this is the prophet Elisha in both of, these, uh, both of these stories. I love Elisha. Read 2 Kings sometime. It's, it's an amazing, amazing Uh, some amazing scriptures. So 2 Kings 4. One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elisha said. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Mm -hmm. Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many, as many. I want you to keep that in mind. Borrow as many, as many empty jars as you can, as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon, every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts. And you and your son can live, you and your sons can live on what is left over. Okay, here's the beautiful thing. Gather as many containers as you can find, and, and I will multiply, or God will multiply it, right? He'll multiply it into as many jars as you can bring. It wasn't until the last jar that the olive oil stopped flowing. In other words, if there had been more jars, because he said, as many, If there had been more jars, more olive oil would have flowed. It only stopped when there were no more jars available, right? Here's the the point. Now, obviously, God was doing an amazing miracle here in in giving the resources to this widow in order to let her pay her debts. But he was proving something about himself also. God doesn't just do one thing at a time, right? He does a million things at a time. And he's proving to Elisha, he's proving to all the people there, he's proving to us that he is a God who is limitless, that he he does not have a cap on the resources he can give, on the power that he can dispense. He does not have a cap on that. The only cap is what's available to him. Mm. So he can, he, he can flow and flow and flow and flow and flow forever. Mm. And, and this story, it was done because there were no more jars. Now look at this. In 2 Kings 13, when Elisha was in his last illness, so this is the end of his life. King J of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hand on the bow. And Elisha laid his hand, laid his own hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded, open the eastern window, and he opened it. Then he said, shoot. So he shot the arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram, for you will completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. Now there is a likelihood that Jehoash knew the story of the widow, mm. knew that, that, the flow, that, that God was limitless mm. in his ability. Strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. Mm. That's Elisha. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. Then Elisha died and was buried. 
Now what's the point of the story? The point of the story is however many times he would have struck the ground is however many victories he would have had. Now, he still had three victories, and some might say that's okay. But the reason that, the reason that Elisha was angry was because he realized the king didn't understand who God was. That he realized the king didn't get it. He, he didn't understand who was fighting for him. That God, who has limitless resources, who is able to do far above anything we could ask or imagine or think, was giving him the ability to seal the victory completely. But he stopped short. And so what I want to implore you today is don't stop short. Don't stop short in your heart of letting Jesus in, of letting Jesus take up every available space. In other words, make every space available. Let him come into every room in your house. Do not leave anything locked away from him. Nothing because he wants to flow unlimited power and presence into your life. And it's not just so that that will happen, that he wants to do that. It's so that then it can flow out of you. He wants to flow it unlimited power and resources and into you so that they can then flow out of you. And don't stop the flow. It might look different. It, it, might be, it might be crazy, like, like you might be going down one avenue, and I've experienced this recently, where you thought, this is the flow, right? Mm. This, is, this is where God's leading. This is the flow. And then it dried up. If, if you're going with the flow and it dries up, you're good. Go with the flow that God has, right? Don't, don't try to ma- fabricate that back into a river, If God's stopping something in your life, if he wants to say, no, I'm altering course, let him do that. Like follow the flow. So so it's too, you need to follow the flow that he has, but we can only do that when we're allowing Jesus to fully flow within us. So we're going to sing a song here again, a song that's very special, that has really a lot of roots in, um, in what we're talking about. It's called When You Walk Into the Room. And I want to encourage you today to think about, as we sing, those spaces that you have not made available to Jesus in your heart. Or perhaps those ways that you've limited the dreams that he's placed in your heart for where he wants to take you and what he wants to do, where, where maybe you've struck the arrow three times or you feel like you only want to strike the arrow three times. But God is saying, no, 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 I want you to strike the arrow till the last thing breaks, right? Just strike that thing. Just keep striking the arrow until he does what he wants to do, until he's done, until he's accomplished that area. So as we sing, I want us to think about those things. And and if you need to say yes to Jesus today, you can do that during this song. Just simply say, just simply cry out to him during this song and say, Jesus, I give you my life. As we sing it, it, it's, it might even be more powerful because we're singing about Jesus coming into our room, right? Into here. And for some of you, you need Jesus to come in for the first time. And so I encourage you while we're singing this to just cry out to him and say, Jesus, I give you my life. I want to make room for you in my life. And if if you've maybe been on the fence or, or you've been just kind of in that place of striking the arrow a few times or simply in that place of locking him out, open the door and let him in this morning. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Here's a link to some of our other messages. And if you were blessed by today's video, would you go to RhapsodyChurch.com, it's in our description, and consider partnering with us. Have a great day.